ready to help you with the dogs. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another Facebook Live uh, Stay at Home Shelter in Place edition of Mid American Gardener. We've got a lot of content tonight. We've got show and tells. We've got lots of questions to answer that you sent in. Um, so we are, we're pretty pumped, actually. And this has turned into a really um, successful thing that we, we wouldn't really know what to expect from it. Um, but we are really glad that folks are taking part. Um, we're, we're still able to bring you your content that you love. The temperature is supposed to be warming up. We're all supposed to be outside. So um, we're able to connect with you in some way and that's really cool. And hopefully when we get back into the studio, we can incorporate um, our new our new followers, our new fans, our new friends into that. So uh, joining us tonight is our longtime host, um, Jennifer Nelson. So Jen, if you wouldn't mind, um, just like we do in the studio, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your specialty in the garden. Sure. Hi, I'm Jennifer Nelson. Um, I'm a horticulturalist. You can find me online at groundedandgrowing.com. I am pretty well a generalist, so I love to talk about all things horticulture. But if I had to pick some favorites, I would say houseplants and vegetable gardening. And we are almost there. So uh, I know you've been putting some things in the ground. I've been putting some things in the ground. So uh, we'll get to that here shortly. So uh, we've had some folks send in some questions ahead of time for Jen to answer. Um, and we can jump in while we're waiting for folks to join us and tackle some of these questions real quick that you sent in. So let's start with, um, Let's start with a Facebook question. Uh, Marsha Taft Harbor wants to know if it is okay to plant zinnia seeds now. And I'm assuming she means outside, so plant them out. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? Well, they, they germinate pretty quickly if the ground is warm and ready. It is a little cold outside. Um, they're probably just gonna sit there right now, depending on where she's at. Um, mm -hmm. Writing from, um, if she had the way to start them inside, uh, and just let them, they would probably come up really quicker inside and then transplant them out. But if she put them outside, they probably are not going to do anything for a little while. They're probably going to take a little longer to grow. Till things warm up a little yeah. bit. And I'm actually surprised with this being, you know, almost May. And I don't, maybe it's wishful thinking, but I just wish it was just a little bit warmer. Yeah. <laughs> I've been wanting to jump the gun on a couple of things. What do you, um, what do you have outside right now in your garden? I am completely breaking all the rules at my house. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, um, I have tomatoes outside my seedlings are, I moved them all outside. Uh, I also planted a couple of tomatoes in a planter. Oh, you're brave. Well, I put them in a planter because if it does get cold, I can, pull them in the garage without much effort. They've got wheels on them. And so, uh, yeah, I'm kind of breaking the rules, but I do have a way, a way to save them mm -hmm. if I have to. Gotcha. Sorry if you can hear the background noise. My dogs decided that now is the appropriate time to um, eat and drink. So they're over there being very noisy uh, in their food bowl. Just um, like kids. Yeah, just like kids. They wait <laughs> until, and I, you guys heard me shout, if everybody needs to do anything, you got 10 minutes and it's the dogs this time around. So. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, we've got some questions that folks emailed in as well. Um, we'll start with this one. Um, we have huge oak trees in our yard. One has a hole in the side near the ground and ants are starting to get into it. Can the hole be filled with anything to repair it? What is, what's your take on that? Well, I will tell you that I've seen people try to repair things like this. And generally speaking, there's, there's a problem. If there's ants that are getting into the tree, the ants didn't start the problem, but they're taking advantage of a situation. So there's something going on. There's probably some rot, something serious going on with the tree. I would have an arborist come and take a look at it mm -hmm. to evaluate the tree. Um, because chances are, if you were to seal it off, I've seen people put things like concrete or whatever in holes, chances are that's gonna just seal a problem in it's not going to cure anything. So I would get, I would have somebody come out and look at the tree. That, okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't know of anything that's going to be a real more of a band aid. Everything that you would put to seal it off is not going to fix anything. Okay. So yeah, find the, find the source of the problem. Yeah. Now you, now after, let's say there is a, a damaged or diseased spot or the tree uh, may be unhealthy. If you find the source and fix it or get rid of it, 
then is there a way to steal up the tree? I've seen people wrap them. Can you wrap? Yeah, I know there's a pro there's also things called cabling. Like if you have a split trunk, it's a legit thing. I, I've read about it that they actually drill holes and they put like a lag bolt and mm -hmm. they cinch it up and the tree grows around it and it's supposedly fine. My 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 dad had a tree that half of it fell away and he put a pipe and he filled that with concrete and made like a prosthetic trunk for the tree. <laughs> It wow, he was invested. It's still alive. I mean, he did that like 30 years ago. So, I mean, I'm not going to say that that's like, he doesn't do things by the book. He never did things by the book. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, Tiffany Bell writes in, hello. Every year my hydrangea gets some sort of fungus. Is there anything I can preemptively do to keep the fungus at bay, like a copper fungicide or horticulture oil? And if so, how often do I apply? You probably could do the copper fungicide and it'll say on the label what the interval is. And that may get really tiresome to keep yeah. remembering to do that. I would look at maybe trying to thin out the stems so you get better air circulation. Do what you can to improve the cultural conditions around the plant because it's getting the fungus because it's, it's too moist. It's probably cool, cool and moist for too long. So if you can open it up so you get more air circulation, that'll probably help. Okay. Uh, Daniel, I, I don't know how to pronounce the last name, I'm sorry, uh, writes in, what trees can one plant where the soil carries verticillium wilt? Oh, man. <laughs> Do we need to get back with him on that one? We're going to have to get back with him on that one. That's a, that's a tough one to answer off the cuff. Okay. Okay. Let's see what else we've got going on. While I'm looking up any um, questions that are coming in, do you have um, a show and tell that you sure, would like yeah, to I do. talk about while I'm sourcing new questions? Sure. I have a new plant baby here. This is some people. <gasps> is that a monstera? It's the common name is mini monstera, but it's not a monstera. It's a Raphidophora tetrasperma. It's commonly, oh. it's commonly confused with uh, monstera or there's a philodendron with a similar kind of cut leaf like that. I just got mm -hmm. it. It's my new baby. Uh, I love it. <laughs> I love it too. And it's smaller. I want a monstera really bad, but they're so huge. They so are. I'm really kind of like debating like, do we need to give up a piece of furniture or something to have a monster? A child. <laughs> it's like you know. A child, yes. <laughs> Might threaten them. But One must make sacrifices. <laughs> exa exactly. So yeah, this, so this is this is a little bit brighter light than a philodendron. So it's it's sitting in the kitchen near, I've got some plant lights in my kitchen right now when I'm starting seedlings and stuff, but it'll go once the weather warms up a little bit, I'll put it out on the porch with my other plants. Nice, very yeah. nice. Okay, Facebook. Let's see. Julie Crouch writes in. Uh, she wants to ask about purple ruffled basil. She says hers keeps wilting no matter what she does. Is there a disease that's causing that or is something um, that she can try to get that healthy again? There are some diseases in basil and I can't tell from what she's describing whether she's got that or not, but I wonder if she's got some problems with the roots. Like how big, how big of a plant are we talking? Are we talking seedlings? Are we talking a full size plant? And if it's the same seed, like if it's seedlings and you're seeing the same problem every time, I would maybe try a different source of seed or a different planting mix just to rule out some kind of damping off fungus. Okay. Okay. Uh, second question sure. uh, from her. Is it best to transplant hostas before the leaves open? So I'm imagining splitting um, I think it's just easier because mm -hmm. if you wait till they're, I've waited until they're huge and it's ridiculous. And, <laughs> and I've had, I've waited until they're fully huge and then transplanted mm -hmm. them and the, the leaves have ended up dying. Now they'll come back. They're not, it's really hard to kill a hosta in general, but uh, it is easier if, if you just transplant them when they're, or split them when they're small. Mm -hmm. which kind of leads into uh, one of my show and tells for the uh -huh. evening. So um, a few, well, we were in the studio, so it had to have been January or February, but Ella came onto the show one night and she gave me a baggie of hosta seeds. And so Ooh. she gave these directions to take them home and put them in a little Tupperware bowl and make the little greenhouse for them. And so here's my haul so far. Um, it didn't come in as full as the example that she brought, but 
That's okay. Oh, so no, that's cool. These are um, lots of different colors, different shades. So when do I start plucking these babies out of here um, to get them in their individual pots? And then when do we take them outside? I think they hold those up again. I think they look like they're getting, if you can handle them without mm-hmm. mangling them too much, I would go ahead and start trying to transfer them to their individual pots mm-hmm. and then treat them like you would any other perennial that you started from seed, like a hardening them off outside. Mm-hmm. You got to mm-hmm. kind of baby them before you don't just take them from there and put them out. Of course, you got to, I would let them get bigger in their own individual pot, you know, have them outside in a protected start area them, for a while. Start them yeah. off a couple of days here and there. Yeah. Um, so well, usually when you transplant these, they kind of are a little puny that first year yeah. with these, with the seed or the plantlings. Will, will there be nice growth this year? Will I see some pretty good it's growth probably gonna, Well, it's, they're not going to be a full hosta, of course. You're probably not going to get too huge, but next year you should see more more shoots at the base it should be Mm -hmm. spreading spreading a Mm -hmm. little bit i would i would think probably at least three years before you have really that's what i would think yeah okay but that's pretty good going from seed that is true that is true this was an exercise in patience um because usually you know they just get too big you take a shovel and you whack them and then you've got a big beautiful pasta to look at and so this is my my little project of patience so okay Moving on to the next question. Uh, Pat is having trouble with moles in the lawn. They're taking everything over and everywhere. And uh, we get this question a lot all year round. Um, Mm -hmm. So what what advice do you have for her? Well, um, I'm going to guess that if they're like this every year, she probably lives near woods. And that's going to be just a perpetual problem. the way to control them, there's a couple options. Trapping is probably your number one option. And that involves buying traps and figuring mm-hmm. out, you have to figure out which runs are the main ones. You have to mm-hmm. go and stomp, stomp them down and then see which ones raise back up the next day. And you know, that's the main one. Uh, there's also some poisonous uh, earthworms. They look like worms and you can put those in the, in the runs. And it's the same. I did not know about it's like poison. Just like, yeah, that's, I think, yeah, the brand I've seen is I think Tomcat, they make like mouse poisons and stuff, but Mm -hmm. they make a, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. They make a mole poison that looks like a little, it looks like an earthworm and you have to figure out, you still have to figure out where's the main run and -hmm. then kind of dig down and put them in there. I, we've only had moles a couple of times and they just kind of make a little like tour through our yard and then they leave. Um, I've never had them stick around. We have them in our backyard. If you stand on a ladder, you could see the whole network. I mean, they just, they tear, they're going under the chicken coop. They're going under the fence post. And of course, initially I thought, no, let's not kill them. And now I'm just like, death we might have to kill (laughs) because you just can't get rid of them okay so that's uh some good advice for pat hope that works out uh benjamin anderson writes in once the seed is germinated indoors how long until we can plant it in uh, raised beds outdoors safely and i know for a fact um he is not in zone five he's in new york (laughs) (laughs) now i'm testing not only your plant knowledge but your zone knowledge (laughs) Well, I'm not exactly sure what zone he'd be in, but it, with anything, it's going to depend on what you're starting. Uh, Mm -hmm. You're going to have to like peppers take a lot longer than tomatoes and squash doesn't take nearly as long as tomatoes. You're just going to have to gauge by the size of the plant. And you're still going to have to go through that process of hardening off where you put Mm -hmm. them outside for a little bit in the shade, and then you kind of move them into the sun. And then you just kind of gradually get them used to it. You cannot go from in the house one day to in the garden, Mm -hmm. they're just going to, they're just going to be toast. (laughs) So um, I remember a long time ago, some of the the older folks used to say that, and I've actually seen this in some textbooks too, but you can go by the number of true leaves. Is that something that you use when you're planting out? I don't use it for planting out. I use it for just kind of gauging when is the right time to maybe move a tomato into its, um, individual container. We used to use that um, when I was a grad student, we transplanted corn, believe it or not. I studied, oh. yeah, I transplanted a <laughs> field of sweet corn. That, that's crazy fun fact about <laughs> my, my life. 
That sounds tedious. That's when you're like questioning all your life decisions <laughs> while, you're, <laughs> while you're transplanting an entire field of corn. But we used to go by how many leaves, how many leaves were on the seedlings. Cause if you waited too long, the corn would be stunted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, okay. There, so there is some truth to it. Gotcha. Um, Debbie Meninga Heiser wrote in, how often can you put granular weed killer on your lawn? Hmm. That is going to be entirely dependent on the label on that granular weed killer. It will say it, usually those are mixed in with um, fertilizer. So you're not going to want to do that too terribly often, but I would read the individual, whatever brand you're using. And it should say what the, yeah, what, what the recommended interval is. And you can always go out with just something like a ready to spray and spray individual weeds whenever you want to. Okay. Um, next one is from uh, Lori Belka. I have tropical hibiscus about six years old and not a lot of blooms. Could this be because of root bound or should I trim branches to promote new growth? Well, I used to have hibiscus like this. I had several of them and then darn it, the kids needed a be bedroom. So I had to get rid of them. Oh. <laughs> The things we give yeah, up I for know. these children. I know. <laughs> so no, that about this time of year, they would look terrible. They would look so scraggly and have really no blooms on them. And so this was a great time of year to give them a haircut, cut them back, um, give them a, maybe they need it to be repotted. You can trim the roots a little bit too, if you want, but mm -hmm. definitely give them a haircut and a shot of fertilizer. And once they get outside, they'll just take off. Okay. Let me check and see what other questions we've got. Um, let's see, we have one. Uh, how can I get rid of scale for houseplants? Well, maybe it could be outdoors, but I'm guessing houseplants. I have tried a concoction of alcohol, shampoo, and water, plain spray, washing it off, but it still comes back every winter. Plants are outdoors during summer and indoors during winter. Uh, edible leaves of the Indian curry leaves. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have a... I've had, I mean, we've all had scale. If you have plants inside you, it's like a baptism by fire. So, uh, what are, what are some of your, your tips and tricks to get rid of those? Like my best tip you can't use on this plant. Cause it's an edible plant because you're eating the leaves. There are some systemic treatments that work really well for scale in house plants with that use imidacloprid, but it's not going to work for her here. Cause she's using it to cook with since it's the edible the Indian curry leaves, I would go with something like a horticultural soap. And that's uh -huh. kind of what the concoction with alcohol and shampoo and water is trying to get at, because um, you need to be able to break through the shell on the scale insect to kill it, because it's got the shell for a reason, it's really protects it. So the thing about horticultural soap is it's formulated for plants and it's formulated to penetrate that shell and kill that mm -hmm. scale insect mm -hmm. and not and not harm the plant and it's not going to harm you either i mean you wash it off so mm -hmm. it's it's a good non-toxic choice for if you have kids and pets or it's an edible plant it's something that you're going to have to apply regularly though it's not a you know one time one shot deal or at, at all and scale is just really tough once it gets established and if you can put your plant outside, that usually helps. And wherever you keep it in the house, make sure that you go over that area and wash it down, clean it. Because the crawler stage of, of scale can hang out on shelving or wherever you nearby where you keep that plant. So you could have eggs just hanging out until they have an opportunity to hatch again. That is a tough one too. And if you don't get, you know, if you don't lift the leaves up, mm -hmm. if you don't really drench it, I mean, it'll be yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. um, have you used just plain neem oil before? I've used it. It kind of drives my whole family out of the house because it stinks, <laughs> it stinks yeah. so bad. So if you're, if you're at a stay at home order and you know, you need some space, you probably should get some neem oil out. You'll get some, oh, personal, no. you'll get some personal space. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> a little help, Trav. I got to tag in the husband on this one. Oh, that's fine. Jen, why don't you read the next question? While I... 
Can you? Uh, or actually, I can I read can't. it. Um, okay, these cuttings were taken on 321. <laughs> uh, DJ, this is a graphic one if you've got it. These cuttings were taken on 321. The top one is potted and was treated with an insecticide for houseplants. The lower one was treated with insecticidal soap more than once. There's no scale on the top leaves when I took the cutting. Um, they want to know if this, the picture that's accompanying this is scale or something else. Do we have the photo, DJ? DJ uh, is our director here, pulling the strings. There we go. Oh, so I don't know if you can see. It looks like water spots. Well, I see some little pesty guys on the left oh, plant on the right side. It's kind of hard to tell what it is, but I do see something. Do they rub off? That's what I would, I would try to see if they rub off. It looks like hard water, like mineral spots to me, but maybe I'm not seeing it well on my monitor. Okay. Um, yeah, we can't tell if it's scale or not. Um, but what um, I would just I like, do well, see the water spots, but I thought I like there I saw a little bit of a I don't know a bump or something on one of the leaves. It's kind of hard to tell. I would try to rub them off and see if they come off. If they're white like that, they might be mealy bug, not scale. If they're kind of a cottony look mm -hmm. to them. And mm -hmm. those are just as irritating and annoying as scale. And they can be really hard to get a handle on yeah. once they get established. But the same thing, the same rules would apply here. I would say go with the, the horticultural soap, or in this case, you could, she's already tried some sort of houseplant insecticide. There's a couple of options that wouldn't be suitable for edible plants, but you could use here with pyrethrins, or there's an imidacloprid granular um, product that Bonide makes it's B O N I D E, super stuff. It just yeah, I like their products. I do too, and it's so easy. It'll tell you like size of the pot, how many teaspoons, and you just kind of work it in the soil and water it in. And if it if it is scale, that would take care of it. Or mealy bug. It, if it's white and cottony, like that one on the right, kind of has a mealy bug look to me. Um, okay. That's what I would do. Okay, let's see. Uh, if you are still watching, uh, we've got about, well, we can go as long as we want, I guess, but uh, <laughs> get your questions in if you would like to ask Jen something. Um, Celeste writes in, love the show. What is the best way to repot a rubber plant? It is about three feet high and three feet across and it has outgrown its pot. <laughs> well, you're, pro you're probably going to want to get an assistant <laughs> for this. Oh, one. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just so big. Yeah. Um, what the best way to repot it? I, you're probably what this is going to be a plant that is going to just keep getting big if you just keep getting a bigger and bigger pot. Um, I made this mistake with Schefflera years ago in high school when I was getting really like into plants and I was kept repotting my mom's Schefflera that she, the umbrella plant that she had in the living room, and we we had to give it away when we had like forty. <laughs> We, my dad and I built a cart for it because it was so heavy. It had 40 pounds of potting soil in it. Oh my gosh. And it, and it like, it was taller than me, which isn't that tall, but it's tall for a plant. We, tall for a plant. <laughs> yeah. So rubber tree is going to be kind of the same way. It's just going to keep growing if you keep putting it in a bigger pot. So you might want to think about what your limits are for your house. And if don't go too much bigger pot wise. Uh, but you could kind of gently prune the roots if you needed to, but uh, definitely get some help with something that big. And uh, yeah, I, you, I don't know with a, without seeing it, you know, sometimes those get so big, they can distort the pot and you might have to break the pot, but I don't, I don't know not having a picture. I think I'm running into that with a ZZ plant that I have. It's mm -hmm. huge. And I, every time I, I water it, I'm thinking to myself, one of these days I'm gonna have to get this guy out of this pot and I have no idea how I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I have broken pots before, cut them off. Yes, yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, uh, Linda Lee wants to know if there's a granular product for scale on Magnolia. Ooh, that one I would have to do some looking up but there are some treatments for scale. I think there's, I think that's one that they use horticultural oil on in the winter time. Okay. Just thinking off the top of my head. Okay. Um, Tiffany writes in, Tiffany Bell, when transplanting seedlings into the expandable Jiffy pots, what's the best way to transplant? Leave them as is, cut the mesh. Also, if seedling leaves start getting a red tint, 
Oh, let me expand the question. Should I be worried it's under a seedling LED light? So there's a few okay. questions tucked away in there. Uh, how do you transplant the seedlings is the first question. Cut the mesh. Absolutely cut the mesh. Okay. It doesn't, it does, it does not biodegrade. I find it years later in the garden. Yeah. So I just, you don't even have to cut it. You can just tear it right off. Just okay. be gentle if there's a ton of roots coming out so you don't rip all the roots, but. Should... All right. And she wants to know, uh, the leaves are getting a red tint on our black eyed Susans. Should she be worried about that? You know, usually red tint is kind of a stressed plant. So I would look at what her situation is. How is her water? Is it too much water, too little water? Has she fertilized her seedlings at all? Because that's typically something that you would see. Um, like I think phosphorus deficiency shows up as red. And again, I'm remembering off the top of my head here. <laughs> but um, I would look at what, how she's been caring for them. And they may be just, if she's talking about transplanting them to bigger pots, they may be just getting big. And if she hasn't, hasn't fertilized them they're going to start to look kind of kind of puny okay all right um we don't have any other questions that have come in right now so i'm going to jump ahead to my other question for you so here is and i'm sure i'm among uh millions of others who yes. you know i got i got the lily for easter um it's still kicking still in good shape um so i've already had of course the easter sunday bloom so you know, can I put this outside? Can it stay outside? Do I need to bring it in? Uh, what are some, what are, what's some advice keeping this guy alive? It's absolutely great to put out at the garden here. Um, those are native actually to Japan mm -hmm. and they're supposed to be native to um, about zone seven, but we, I have overwintered them before here, just kind of put them in a sheltered spot. Mm -hmm. I've got a good spot near my dryer vent where it's doesn't get super cold because you've got the dryer on. Mm -hmm. um, they're not the most long-lived perennial I've ever seen in our area, but they're definitely worth a shot. And they actually naturally bloom in the summer. So you may put it out and have it, it'll all kind of curl up and die, but then you may see, <laughs> some more, don't, don't be afraid, don't be alarmed. You may see some more growth um, later on in the summer, but it should come back uh, okay. next, next summer. I actually noticed at our church, um, our former pastor was planting them out and we, there's a whole mm -hmm. bunch of them. Yeah. Um, fertilizer. Should I feed this guy when I, when I transplant him? I would, I would go okay. ahead and uh, he's done blooming, give him a good general fertilizer when you plant him and just treat him, put him in with all the rest of your perennials and see how he does. I hope I can get a, a another bloom out of it. They, uh, I was reading about people who are able to get it on Easter and it blooms and then when's the quickest you can get another set. So maybe in the summertime, I'll, yeah. I'll bring it back on the show. Oh, that'd be awesome. Uh, let's see, what, is there anything else um, that you wanted to show or that you wanted to mention or bring up that we haven't gotten to yet while we're waiting for more questions? Uh, well, we're, we're in full on uh, mulching mode at our house. Ah. We got a delivery of mulch last week. So we, I've been putting my kids to work. I've <laughs> so, seen the, <laughs> your little assistants. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. But yeah. It, it tires them out. It's a good PE, you know, homeschool and PE lesson. Uh, yep. So we are, it's, I'm finally getting that mulch down, um, at the right time of year before everything's huge. So I feel mm -hmm. that's kind of a silver lining to all this. Okay. Um, and do you want to, you know, we mentioned your videos, um, tell people where they can find you because you have really ramped up your content, uh, <laughs> since the shelter in place. So, uh, you've got your whole, you know, your own thing going on. I've got, I've got my family involved now. I've been doing videos. Uh, my blog is grounded and growing, uh, grounded and growing .com. You can find, I've got a really popular article about, uh, Easter lilies there. Maybe I can share it in the comments on the show. Uh, I'll, so if anyone wants more info on your Easter lily, uh, but we've been doing some videos from the garden and you can see my kids being kids. Yeah. <laughs> I think son, you say the mom voice makes an appearance every once in a while, the right? The mom voice comes out. My son, Andrew is really getting into it. We, I forgot I had a microphone that we can plug into the, into my phone. So he's been really playing like the he's been your cameraman journalist. lately yes. actually so he can yes. probably put that on a resume or something <laughs> at, the, <laughs> at the end of this thing yeah we're just <laughs> we're trying to have fun with it hopefully people can see that you know it's 
it's definitely not perfect, but we're having fun with it. Exactly. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, I skipped a question on sure. Facebook. Um, Sarah Johnson writes in, she was looking for a peat free alternative for potty mix. Um, it's a two-part question, but first what's a peat free alternative that you I would, uh, coconut fiber, um, C O I R. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Core. I think it's one of those words that you just don't go around saying all the time. Yeah, You know what <laughs> it looks like. But I know what like... it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> it, it comes in a big brick. You can use it by itself. Um, it comes in a compressed brick and you have to kind of chip it away and kind of hydrate it up. I use it sometimes. Um, I have worm composting in the garage and mm -hmm. sometimes that worm compost is just a little too, um, doesn't have an enough i don't know it seems like it's really like a bonding agent yeah it it's like, like a really fine yeah it's like so fine it's like kind mm -hmm. of mucky and I, that core if i mix some of that in it makes it a little bit better to use um mm -hmm. in with my plants uh, i don't but that, think i've ever used that is it long strings or is it like um granule or it, there's some stringiness to it but it's not like um i don't think i've, I've seen it's it. not it's not like sphagnum moss or anything some gardening catalogs mm -hmm. have it and varies very widely in price um i've mm -hmm. actually found some on amazon that was not a bad price and it just it comes in like a like a smallish amazon box it's just a brick mm -hmm. and some of them yeah it's worth a try just to see you don't have to it's about ten dollars you can get mm -hmm. a reasonable size brick that expands to yeah quite a bit well, let me see. I think we've got one more. Oh, it's John. I was wondering where he was tonight. Uh, uh, John <laughs> Bodensteiner writes in, uh, let's see, hummingbirds appeared today. So get your feeders out. He's actually not the first person um, that I saw that posted something about hummingbirds showing up. Have you seen any? Yeah, we talked about it on um, our little videos, I think last week that, yeah, um, someone, I, some friend of mine was mentioning it and I pulled up one of the maps online and there were people in Mount Zion near Decatur that had seen them back on the 8th of April. So oh, wow. I felt like I was late to the, to wow. the game getting them out last week. I but, haven't seen any. And I'm also getting very jealous of people who are finding morels everywhere because I haven't found oh, any. <laughs> I've never looked for those. We have Orioles. We've had yeah. Orioles at our feeder since um, Easter. Yeah, so that's good. Nice, nice. Well, um, anything else that you brought that you wanted to show before we wrap things up or? Nope, nope. Well, thank you, Jen. I really appreciate it. It's always a fun time when we're on together, trying to control the kids and the dogs and the whole situation. <laughs> thank God so, we have gardening. Thank God we yes. have gardening to clean God our sanity. That's it. And so hopefully um, as we move forward, because you know we've got a few more weeks left of this at minimum. So um, hopefully when the weather gets nicer, we can move this thing outside. And oh, yeah. if the, you know, if technology and everything cooperates um we can do a couple of shows outside and you can show us what you've got growing and you know oh, we can yeah. incorporate some other some other things so but i always appreciate I are, your time we have construction going on in the backyard so you can see the process of trying to reconstruct <laughs> the yard <laughs> nice all in real time right yes 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 all right. Well, thanks to everyone who watched tonight. Uh, we are making the best of this entire situation. We are going to garden. We are going to get you your gardening uh, information one way or another. So um, we're going to try to do this as often as we can. And uh, thanks to you for watching. Thanks to DJ for all of your help, uh, the technical help. And please keep those questions coming in. You can visit us on our Facebook, Instagram, or you can email us at any time, yourgarden at gmail.com. Um, get in touch with us on our socials and leave us those questions so we can get them answered for you. Um, I have a feeling we're gonna have a lot more new gardeners outside getting dirty this year and it's very exciting. So uh, we love those questions, we love those challenges. So thanks to everybody for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Good night. <laughs>